Tyler Stroud, the 25-year-old who said, I will win this weekend, and he has not done it once, but twice as he takes the checkered flag. Strauss's sweep put him on top of the point standing. A couple of championship favorites look to improve after a tough season over. Oh, oh we have contact. Anna Beatriz and J.R. Hildebrand. Today, history will be made as the Firestone Indy Lights hit the streets of Long Beach for the first time. The Long Beach 100 is next. Well, along with our driver analyst, Ari Landyke Jr., I'm Mike King. We welcome you to beautiful Long Beach, California, where we get set for the third race on the 2009 Firestone Indy Lights calendar, the Long Beach 100. And Ari, up to this point, it's been all about a couple of guys from California when you talk about the fast cars on track. First off, Jonathan Bomarito, who is a newcomer to the series, but the guy who's on pole once again, like he was in St. Pete, J.R. Hildebrand. Both these guys have been very fast here. They have track experience here, so that's been key. JR is obviously on pole. He's trying to redeem himself a little bit from last week where he did finish on the podium but he did have a few incidents during the second race so let's see if he can make that up and have a good race today the third member of our broadcast team is kevin lee he's downstairs on pit lane with our pole sitter J.R. Hildebrand started on the pole a couple of weeks ago in race one at St. Petersburg. He's back on the point here today. Turn one is always critical in a street course race. How are you approaching this? Yeah, well, turn one here in particular is is, is particularly inviting, I think, for guys a couple rows back. So uh, hopefully we can just get a good jump on the start. I think I got some smart drivers right around me, so hopefully we can just work together, get through the first corner, and then go racing from there. You're hoping not to have to deal this, that everyone is chasing you, but where are the opportunities to pass, or is it only mistakes? Uh, you know, I mean, this, this is a track that's it's prone to, you're, you're prone to making mistakes as a driver around here. Every corner is different. There's lots of curbs that you have to use. They can kind of spit you out if you get them wrong. So um, there's, I'd say the front straight, just because you're coming off such a slow corner, is actually really tough to get a run on somebody going into turn one. But there's some short shoots kind of on the back, back section of the track that I think you can get by if you needed to. All right, good luck. That's our pole sitter, J.R. Hildebrand. As Ari mentioned, uh, Jared Hildebrand, third and 21st in those two races uh, at uh, St. Petersburg. There you see Junior Strauss. He is our points leader. Jonathan Summerton, Hinchcliffe, Harrington, and Howard, your top five going into race number three. Junior Strauss, boy, he thrilled us a couple of weeks ago. He's downstairs with Kevin Lee. Young man thrilled us a couple of weeks ago at St. Petersburg. Junior Strauss won and swept the doubleheader. What kind of uh, last couple of weeks has it been for you? I know you made a trip back home. Last week's been hectic. We uh, headed over back to Holland uh, to visit my sponsors, Shell and Knaus, and uh, I was happy to fly back on Sunday and relax a bit at the, at the beach here. Well, you don't get to start in the front today. You have to start mid-pack. How will you be able to pick your way through the crowd? Yeah, we're P12. We had a rough qualifying and a rough start of the weekend. The race car is really good, so I think uh, we're going to have a cool race. All right, good luck. That's Junior Strauss. Thanks. Now let's go down to the track for the most famous words in racing. It's, it's time, time for, for those, those most famous, famous words in motorsports. Please, Please welcome, welcome back, back the manager of Firestone, Firestone Racing, Mr. Mr. Joe Barbieri, as he gives the command. Firestone Indy Lights drivers, start your, your engines! We'll be right back with the start of the Long Beach 100 right after this. Long Beach is a really rough circuit, um, lots of different kinds of curbing and stuff like that. Every corner is really, really different, and so that poses a challenge as a driver to get used to everything. You really have to learn each corner separately and individually and to get the car right because it poses some different challenges from a setup perspective. It's a track I know. It's it's a nice mix of some fast corners, some slow corners. It's got, of course, the famous hairpin, so it's going to be a really, really interesting race. And you know, if we have 25 or more Indy Lights cars ripping around there, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a heck of a show. The Firestone Indy Lights Long Beach 100 on Versus is presented by Firestone. With a tradition of innovation that spans over 100 years, Firestone is the first name in Indy racing. Closing in on the start of the Long Beach 100 here on Versus as the cars make their way around this 1.96 mile 11 turn course. J.R. Hildebrand, we heard from earlier, he is on pole and he is from nearby Sausalito, California. James Hinchcliffe 
moves up to the outside of the front row after the Bomberito penalty that we told you about. Jonathan Summerton off to a good start, the fifth position. You see there the driver starting sixth through tenth, including James Davison, who has been fast this weekend. Martin Plowman and Anna Beatrice also with pretty good weekends up to this point. Gustavo Jakobin looking for something good to happen here this weekend. Former champion Wade Cunningham will go off 15th. Other drivers in the field, Sean Guthrie, 35th consecutive start in Firestone Indy Lights competition. Also, Sebastian Saavedra. There's Pablo Donoso, Pippa Man, Sergey Markchantsev, Prendeville and Barbosa filling out the field. And Mario Lyondike Jr., what about the keys here at Long Beach? Well, there's, uh, you know, Long Beach is a difficult place, uh, so track knowledge is definitely one of the keys to the race. Perfect examples are front row. Many of the front runners today have raced here in Long Beach. When you don't have to spend time to learn the track, it's a big advantage for you. The second key is downforce level. A lot of the drivers are going to gamble on this. Can I run less wing? Wing is being the wing angle. You know, this will make the car quicker on the straightaway, you know, but maybe a trade-off. Maybe too, too le not enough wing is not going to be good for, uh, you know, the, the short parts of the track. Uh, another uh, key to the race would be the trouble spots of the race. What are we going to look for here? A lot of drivers saying that this course is cha challenging and difficult. The bumps, the transitions in the road, and the trouble spots could be turns one, five, eight, nine. There isn't much room for error. Let's see how these drivers handle turn one. 25 cars uh, on the grid for this one as they'll come into their two wide alignment and take the green flag racing at Long Beach, California into what is a very tricky turn one. The 25 car field, streaky pass, start, finish, and J.R. Hildebrand, he's gonna carry him into one. Yeah, and he's defending a little bit. He's got the proper line for one, so he holds the lead through turn one. At 15 car, Martin Plowman trying to make a move to the outside as Martin Plowman looking to make some something happened earlier. Go on board here. Tell us what we're seeing. This is uh, the turn the fountain complex. You know, here we go into four, which is a third gear corner. This is Jonathan Summerton. And Summerton Stephen had Wilson. himself a good weekend a couple of weeks ago at St. Pete. But uh, here we go uh, with the Summerton as he tries to pull up on the car. Back to the lead, out in front, the 26 car of J.R. Hildebrand. Jonathan Summerton, by the way, did have some contact with another car, Ari, on the start. Well, here he is, and he's following uh, Stefan Wilson, who's had a really good weekend. Started third, but he slipped back. Richard Philippe up into the third spot, which is great. His sponsor, FunkyMotions.com, on the side of the car. Good to see him up front. Uh, J.R. Hildebrand takes the lead at the early going here. James Hinscliffe, who started on the outside of the front row, currently shown in second place as we watch them now move through the technical part of this course. This is the turn at 10 leading into the hairpin, the slowest corner. Oh, J.R. makes a run. mistake. So J.R. Hildebrand kicks the rear end out there, Ari, and this is the slowest corner these guys will see all season, that hairpin there in 11. It doesn't look like he's lost a lot of time, so he's, he's retained first position. Now it looks like Richard Philippe making a move for second. He's really close here in the slipstream. Hitchcliffe is going to defend the bottom. But there we go. Richard Fully making the move. And he's got the corner as, uh, what, the textbook, Dari, as, as he drafted him down the long straightaway, then moved to the inside. He was in position to make the pass. It looks like Hinchcliffe may have, you know, been distracted a little bit by Hildebrand getting sideways and may have not gone on the power correctly uh, coming off that last corner. So Richard Philippe taking advantage, moving into the second spot. Good to see him making a charge. But Hildebrand right now setting the pace. He's distancing, distancing himself a little bit off the field. So Richard Philippe, he goes uh, to P2, 14th in points after the season opening weekend at uh, St. Petersburg just a couple of weeks ago. But right now, J.R. Hildebrand, and we talked about this at, at the top, Ari, he's been the guy to beat all weekend, loves this race course, and we've got a car Strauss. that is slowing, and, and the three car as well. So Junior Strauss, who won both races, he's, and he's got he's an onboard fire. fire. Yep, he's got to get out of there quick. So Junior Strauss, who won not once but twice at St. Petersburg, the car, the winner circle group shell, number 18 car. Wow. Obviously the fire and big problems there, and they have just not been able to sort things out. So Junior Strauss, the Delphi safety team, will be there to unstrap him and get him out of a burning car. And Ari, we go I've, to a full course caution. Wow, I've never seen a fire like that in the Indy Lights car. So um, it, it looks like it's not an oil fire. Oil fire is usually at the back of the car by the gearbox. So it could be electrical. Um, you know, it's a shame for him. He's struggled all weekend. Obviously, he came in here being the points leader, and he's going to leave with um, 25th place. So, Junior Strauss, the two-race win streak will end right there, as you mentioned. He will wind up with P25 after a just a dream weekend at St. Pete. The three-car of Sergei Makshantsev has also spun, but I do not believe those uh, uh, those two uh, were in, in any way, shape, or form related to one another. Right. As we see, Junior has kind of made it a habit of, of celebrating. On top of cars. And, and look, we, we've also got a problem with, with the five. Yeah, so Romancini has also come to a stop on the track. 
So three different cars involved. There is Paul Dyatlovich, PDM Racing. That is his operation, and his operation, PDM, runs the team that is Winter, Winter Circle Group for uh, Junior Strauss. And uh, we'll hear more about uh, this man Looks who like has been involved in racing. Here. Yeah, so we do have the problem there on the front of the 55. That Look. is Rodrigo Barbosa. And here it is, Ari, as Junior Strauss pulls the car out looks of the like, racing groove. And yeah, it just looks like an electrical fire. Um, you know, he sensed it early enough to, to have it not be too much of a problem, but it's going to end his day, which is really unfortunate. He has struggled here, but he has experience, and I expected him to move up. So unfortunate. Here's the spin by Makshatsev. Yeah, and right. there, there is the contact with the 55. And that so, is at turn five. There's a crown in the road there. So if you turn in a little late, that crown can affect the car and you will spin. And that's exactly what happened. And, um, you know, that's just uh, one of those deals. And uh, fortunately, he's out of the race. And Ari, it is a very precise line through there because on the low side, you have that portable rumble stripping. Right. So you, you have a very precise line through turn number five. So it is J.R. Hildebrand, the pole sitter from nearby Sausalito, California, out in front early here. Richard Philippe runs second. James Hinchcliffe is third. Stephen Wilson and Jonathan Summerton, your top five at the Long Beach 100. Welcome back to the Firestone Indy Lights Long Beach 100 on versus Mike King, Ari Leondyke Jr. and Kevin Lee as we are going back to green at the line. Five of 45 laps will be complete and you see one car peel off. Hildebrand still out in front, but Ari problems for Martin Plowman as he and Stephen Wilson made uh, matters a little tight between themselves uh, earlier in one. Right, he tried to go to the inside and there just wasn't enough room uh, for three cars. They went three abreast and uh, he had some damage to the right front wing so he had to come in to make a pit stop. So Plowman will be uh, back out on track after they make the, the wing change uh, through turns two and three in front of the fountain. Beautiful layout here. And the, really, that's one of the few areas on this course that has changed over the years uh, is uh, the area through the fountain. But meantime, we watch Anna Beatrice. Anna in the number 20 car. She currently runs six, so she takes over the spot from Plowman. She's under heavy pressure right now for Palmerito, who uh, had that penalty, so he had to start eighth. So he's working his way up. Right now, he is in seventh, so he's looking to make a move on Anna here. He's very close in this tight section. This is into turn eight. It's a pretty uh, good passing zone. Oh, this, shoots you, yeah, this shoots you onto that long back straightaway, very fast section of this racetrack. Exactly. Breaking zone into nine. They break here at the 200 board. A lot of grip here into nine, a third gear corner into a very technical section into turn 10, which is a double left-hander, very hard to pass, and then into that really, really tight hairpin in 11. So here's the hairpin in turn number 11 as the slowest part of the course, obviously, and that, that feeds you onto what is a sweeping long front straightaway here on Shoreline Drive. Right, and you heard JR say it's very difficult to pass into one because 11 is so slow, and that sounds kind of strange for, you know, maybe the viewers at home, but when you have a slow entry onto a straightaway, you can, it's hard to tie the pass, and that's why turn one is such a difficult break zone. But we see Gustavo Jakobin making a move. Yeah, the 44 of Gustavo Jakobin, as he comes down the straightaway, he makes the move. So Jakobin uh, will now be uh, show picking up a position on track as he goes from uh, 11th to 10th. He gets past Daniel Harrington. Daniel Harrington had a really good uh, uh, weekend at St. Pete, so he left uh, the points uh, looking pretty good. He was fifth in points going into this event, or fourth, excuse me, and now, um, you know, he's finding himself in 11th place. Well, the 27 and uh, as uh, we continue to watch uh, all the cars make their way around this course, that's Sebastian Saavedra. Sebastian Saavedra, 18 years old from Colombia. This is a highly touted young star, right? no doubt about that. And, and he certainly was poised to have a great weekend. Mechanical problems, though, uh, bit him in race number one at St. Petersburg. He did come back with a good finish in race two. That's correct. And he really was disappointed in qualifying because, you know, he felt he had a really good car. He was good on old tires. Here we see him going into turn 10, double left-hander. Very, very tight hairpin. You can see how tight it is. They use first gear here. Look at the hands, all the way opposite lock. Looks like he didn't get off the corner too well. In front of him right there is Wade Cunningham, which is a, a serious champion. Yep, 2005 champion in Firestone Indy Lights. Long straightaway here, all the way up to about 160 miles an hour before the braking zone into one. Here so we look at the brakes. He'll brake about at the 300 board. There he goes. This is turn one, third gear corner. Oh, he's look got at that. Look at that. That looks like, who is that? Is that Jay Howard? That's the 35 car that gets underneath him. Is that Charlie Kimball? Charlie it Kimball. is Charlie Kimball. Jay Howard's what, what, what a great move, huh? That was a great move. You and you saw how he struggled coming off of 11, and that was a product of that. Now, he struggled. Obviously, uh, Kimball took advantage of it. 
Well, this is a fabulous shot. This really, Ari, gives you an idea of what you guys experience uh, 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 when it comes to street course racing. I mean, it is so physical, and things happen so fast. And, and the pass by Kimball, classic example of just how quickly things can change. Yeah, that was one of those momentum loss. You know, he took advantage of... Uh, of Savager having a bad run off the last corner. Off, here of, off of eight, down the back straightaway, into turn number nine, and we've seen some drivers struggle with nine. And nine is a very, uh, it's a pretty quick corner for how, how tight it is. It's a third gear corner that you saw that asphalt was a different color. It's actually a darker asphalt. It's been patched, which actually adds grip to the track. So a lot of drivers taking advantage of that. Charlie Kimball on the day, up five positions. So Charlie Kimball currently uh, shown in 14th place after starting 19th. So Charlie Kimball is plus five. Uh, Pablo Donoso has moved up four spots. Andrew Prendeville is also up four. So all three of those guys uh, off to a good start here in the first 10 laps of this race. Right, Prendeville had a, an elect uh, a problem in qualifying to where he didn't complete many laps, so he had to start last. Um, so good racing all around the field. We see the uh, the 44 trying to pull up to the rear wing of James Davison. So Gustavo Yakuman on the move a bit. James Davison, he has had uh, been a little sweet and sour for him this weekend. Had some outstanding sessions, and he's had some slower sessions as well. Right. Right, he had a he had a really good run in St. Pico, and he was second place, but he fell to eighth, and he was really disappointed. So he wanted to make up some ground here, use his experience. And we see Plowman, and here's, here's the leader. Future. Here's your leader coming uh, down that long back straightaway, setting up for turn number nine. As J.R. Hilda ran our pole sitter, uh, a lot of fans in the stands here. He's run here obviously before, had some success to win here at Long Beach. Very very big moment for him if in fact he can get it done. Right, he's really trying to capitalize on you know the advantage of having pole position, so huge. But right. Now he sees Martin Plowman in front of him, who had to make a pit stop for that wing change. So that could affect this right now. If he gets held up, Richard Philippe could have the opportunity to catch up. Right now, J.R. Hildebrand working on about a 1.2 second lead over second place. Uh, Richard Philippe from uh, the Philippe brothers, uh, if you will, uh, all three of the brothers uh, in the Philippe family, uh, outstanding racers. And uh, certainly uh, Richard uh, has, has gotten himself off to a pretty good start here. But J.R. Hildebrand, you look back to what he was able to do. He qualified on pole for race one at St. Pete, qualified third in race number two. That first race, he was on the podium, but his restarts were not good in race right. one at St. Pete. But that 21st place finish in, in, in race number two at St. Pete uh, really worked on him just a bit. Right, he left uh, St. Pete seventh in points, and if he, finished, if he wins here today with the finishing order how it's finished right now, he would leave third. So it'd be a big advantage if he could win. Uh, right now, as a driver, though, you're thinking, oh man, I got a back marker ahead of me. Where can I get around this guy? How can I get quickly around him? Maybe make it an advantage if, you, if he can get around him on the front straightaway, and Philippe can't, then, you know, that could be an advantage for him. Well, the R-Pro car, the number 26 machine, uh, the AFS Andretti Green Entry will complete 10 of 45 laps this time by. That's our leader, Jared Hildebrand. Junior Strauss had a problem earlier. Let's get the word to Kevin Lee. You've got Paul Dialovich. Unfortunately, we won't see you in victory lane this week. What was the issue that took Junior out on lap two? Really not sure, except for what we saw on TV. The, uh... Dash gave a signal that we had uh, uh, an engine problem, looked up, we were on fire, uh, we parked it, you know, that happens, the distance from uh, from penthouse to uh, the other house isn't very far, uh, it's really a shame, the uh, Shell V Power uh, Canal sponsored car was, uh, was going to do extremely well again this weekend, it's just a shame that we couldn't give uh, Junior the opportunity to showcase his talents and abilities again. Okay, sorry to talk to you this soon, that's Paul Dietlovich who operates the Winner's Circle Group. It's an interesting time in racing. The highest of highs, the lowest of lows of just over the matter of a couple of weeks. You know, entering 2009, Paul Dialovich started over 70 races as a team owner and never found victory lane. His team works a race shop that once turned out some of the most dominant cars in the history of the Indy 500, the famous Watson Roadster. That was some 50 years ago. Well, now, well, now that shop is producing winning cars once again. We're such a small shop. We have three full-time employees here. It felt so good to go down to St. Pete and get the biggest win of our careers. Paul Dyatlovich said he's a breath of fresh air. He's going to take his owner's breath away once again. What a win for Junior Strauss. It's a storybook uh, ending to a, to a lot of hard work. 
Not only did we come out with one win, we came out with the, the clean sweep of it. Junior Strauss, the rookie, will see the twin checkers. That's awesome. Yeah, he was thrilled after qualifying being on the front row. This is just a dream weekend for him. But that's one of the reasons why we still do it is because of those highlights. Uh, they try to outweigh the uh, the lowlights, and believe me, there's been a lot of that over my career. So give it our best, pal. We still got one more chance. If it feels good, dog. Okay. Here we go, fans. Let's check this first lap time and speed. Not nearly good enough. And they have waved it off. It's not supposed to be easy. This place starts the 33 fastest, best prepared cars. Obviously, I missed. Uh, didn't have the right setup on it, and that's totally, you know, my my error, my fault. For people on the outside to, to look in, you know, the question is asked, why do people, you know, why would they work 24 hours a day, seven days a week on, on, on a race car? It's probably a disease that, that gets into your system, but, and once it does, um, the elation uh, that you have when you have the success, you know, more than makes up for some of the depths of despair that uh, you had before that. It's great to see Paul Diofovich back in victory lane. Walking down pit road last week, my right hand was sore from all the well-wishers. Uh, didn't know I had that many friends. The David uh, and Goliath story, you know, panned out that, uh, you know, here we are, a small team that's uh, going up against uh, the likes of uh, some of the biggest, best-funded teams, uh, you know, in the history of the sport, and uh, we kicked their ass. And Paul is hoping he's found another star, Junior Strauss, as we've documented, won the first two races this season. Unfortunately, we see you much too soon. Fire is a race car driver's worst fear. Any indication what was going on? Well, I went into the second lap and I got some errors on the dashboard. Lights were flashing and I saw a uh, battery errors. So I was like, hey, what's up? Halfway through the lap, engine started to cut out. Looked in the mirror, I saw fire and smoke. I thought it came out of the exhaust. Maybe the engine broke, but uh, well, the fire was a bit too close. It was right behind me, so I knew something was wrong. We'll talk about better things next week in Kansas. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. That's Junior Strauss. J.R. Hildebrand is lady here. It's the Long Beach 100. Stay tuned for Firestone Indy Lights coverage on Versus. Welcome back to the Firestone Indy Lights Long Beach 100 on Versus. Mike King along with Ari Lyon, Dyke Jr. and Kevin Lee as we are showing 19 laps complete. We're working lap 20 under full course caution for this. Ari, a problem for Sean Guthrie on lap 17. Looks like he just took a little bit too much speed into nine. Uh, we don't have a... Uh, to, we can't see what happened at the beginning of the corner, but here we just see him carry too much speed. He's a little wide. Obviously, his tire barrier and his day is done. So he catches the tire barrier with the left rear, and Ari, that's what kicks him into the wall and uh, the damage to the front as we're now set to go back to green flag racing here. Firestone Indy Lights action on the streets of Long Beach. Your leader is Jared Hildebrand, but he's getting pressure from Richard Philippe, who is running in second place. Philippe's been doing a great job of, uh, you know, maintaining the gap to, to Hildebrand, but he hasn't really gotten close. Let's see if he can get close and put on the pressure. Well, Junior Strauss came into this event as the championship leader. He could possibly leave in P2 or P3 as far as the championship goes. Let's get more on that. Kevin Lee is downstairs. We're with, we're with Mark Olson, who owns Philippe's car. Uh, what kind of opportunity does he have to get around him? Well, I think he's seen uh, seen something in a couple of turns, and uh, you know he had uh, he got held up by Plowman in the lap car, and uh, there was a bit of a gap there. So this yellow will give him a chance to start working on uh, working on Jr. He's I mean he's definitely saying he sees some things, and he's going to uh, just just lean on him a little bit and uh, and race him hard and see what happens. There's still a lot of lap, lot of laps left. He's just 19 years old. He's obviously got a bright future ahead of him. Oh yeah, he's very talented. I mean he's the youngest. Uh, race winner ever at Indianapolis uh, won uh, you know won his first championship at the age of 15 uh, he's been fast at fastest every time he's gotten in the car he's he's really that good and uh, um, you know been a lot of fun getting to know him too he's a real really uh, well raised well spoken uh, good with the that's Mark Olson from General Racing with Richard Philippe okay so our 
Martin Lion Dyke Jr., you've got a situation where at least for this weekend, the race door closes on Junior Strauss and that, that great two-race win streak that he had. But now the door opens for so many other drivers like Richard Philippe, who, who did not have the, the dream weekend at St. Petersburg. But now he runs second, the possibility of winning this race, and boom, just like that, you're right back in the championship hunt. As it runs right now, he, he came into this race 14th in points, and he would leave here sixth if he retains his second position. So it's a big weekend for him. He's having a really good race. Uh, his sponsor, FunkyMotions.com, is a, it's a website that he runs. It's pretty cool. I've been to it. And, uh, you know, he's really been quick everywhere. Even in St. Pete, he was very quick in the rain, but he had a crash in the qualifying that put him uh, in the back of the field. So he had a lot of you know, positions to make up, which which is very hard to pass there. So here we see him. He's had a really good weekend all weekend, and he started fourth, and now he's moving his way up. He's in second place. In the double header at St. Petersburg, he was 19th in race one. He was 10th in race number two. As we watch Sebastian Saavedra get on the gas down the back straight into turn number nine as he's trying to chase down Charlie Kimball as they make their way to turn 10. Yeah, here's again that double left-hander. Very, very difficult. You got to set it up really wide here for 11. Tight hairpin. Look at his hands. Totally full awesome. Lock. Full lock onto the power. It looks like Kimball's just a little bit better coming off the corner and uh, they're still in that battle that's for the, 13th. Yeah, that's the battle uh, for, uh, for 12th place as Kimball currently runs in front of Sebastian Saavedra and my goodness, uh, it, it, it's hard to imagine. Kimball making a move here. And is Kimball going to get him? It, yes, he will yes. get underneath. So Charlie Kimball, we, we've seen him do that twice now in almost yeah. the exact same position because he did the same thing to Saavedra a bit earlier. Yeah, that was Harrington that he passed, and that might be one of the keys I talked about. He might be running less downforce, which may hurt him in the slower, slower parts of the track, but is definitely helping him on the straightaways. So Charlie Kimball has gone to 11th place as he gets past Daniel Harrington going into turn one, almost a carbon copy of the movie. Remember, we saw a little bit earlier when we were on board with Sebastian Saavedra, and we were admiring what Saavedra was doing in Suddenly, boom, Kimball's right underneath him there, and one makes a great pass. Right, and, you know, that could be a product of him really getting off the corner out of 11 or the downforce issue, like I said, as we see Saavedra now closing in on Harrington, trying to take advantage of the momentum lost. And uh, Saavedra looks to be quick in the slower sections of the track, but it's very difficult to pass there. Charlie Kimball in that Palm Beach International car, uh, he, of course, born in England and uh, had some success in the F3 Euro Series. Oh, but we got oh, a spin. And we've got a problem. That is the 35 of Kimball, oh. so we jinxed him a little bit there. There in the hairpin. We were just saying how good he was coming Absolutely. off the hairpin. Absolutely. Uh, he got a little greedy there. Maybe he went on the power too soon, and now we see he spun it around. It's very difficult to engage reverse in these cars, so he might need to push back to be able to keep going. Well, he does have it fired, so Charlie Kimball uh, from Camarillo, California, born in England, had just moved up to 11th, but then Ari, just like that, gives away all kinds of positions. Right, now we're looking at JR. Oh, here's a look. We're going to take a look at the, the replay. On board. With Saavedra. With Saavedra. It's hard to tell. It just looks like he, he didn't have contact with the, the inside of the hairpin, but he did maybe accelerate just a little too soon. Here it is from the outside of the uh, turn oh, number 11. Oh, he did touch. He touched the inside yeah, of the hairpin Yeah, you can see there. it right there on the NOS Energy Drink uh, signage. You can see uh, the, the bit of damage there. And he has there. a bent wheel as well. And he simply cannot get that car right. You can right see it, on yeah. that wheel right there. So the problem for Charlie Kimball, and we've got the yellow flag waving as a local yellow. Well, that's a precarious spot, Ari, to, to be perched. But, you know, he is not in the racing group per se because of the swing around 11 that's going to take you to the outside. So he is technically out of the racing line. They may allow that car to, to, to see, stay there. I got to say that they have to go full course yellow for that. He seems like he's in a difficult the right rear uh, suspension is reported to be broken on Kimball's car. So, so he's, that dead is the, the case, he's dead in the water. They yeah. might have to tow it and get him. So Charlie Kimball had worked his way up to 11th, saw it all go away in the hairpin. Meantime, J.R. Hildebrand continues to impress with 24, 45 laps being shown complete. It's Hildebrand, Philippe, Hinchcliffe, Wilson, and Summerton, your top five at Long Beach. Welcome back to the Firestone Indy Lights Long Beach 100 on versus a wild and woolly first half of this race. Azari, some tight quarters racing led to some damage and the fabricators and the carbon fiber shops are gonna be busy and Junior Strauss's team, they're gonna be busy trying to track down the electrical problem. 
Right, exactly. And this is, you know, a situation to where he was the points leader. He may still leave the points leader. Well, that's yet to be determined, but it's an unfortunate incident for him. Uh, Sergey Makshantsev and Rodrigo Barbosa get together the spin. Both cars able to continue. This is one, though, that well, this one hurt right, right. here. As Kim will just try to take too, uh, too much room there, hit the inside wall, and damage the right rear suspension. Charlie Kimball in that number 35 Palm Beach International Raceway car had just made his way up two positions from 13th to 11th when it happened. So here, here we got to look, look at Prentonville. Yeah, he's doing really good. He's up 10 spots right now, working on Jay Howard, also a series champion. He's got a really good run here on the back straightaway. So Jay Howard running uh, in the, the other orange and blue Palm Beach International Raceway car and you got the Team Extreme uh, TMR car. There's the, the two of Andrew Prendeville, the driver out of New Jersey. And as you mentioned, we watched this battle a bit earlier. He's giving right now Jay Howard, the 2006 series champ, all he can, uh, all he can stand. He's just trying to hold him off. Right, he, had, he just a few laps prior had a really good move on Jesse Mason, which is uh, directly behind him. He's working his way up through the field. He's got a little bit of right front damage on his end fence, but it hasn't seemed to affect uh, the, the performance of the car. As you mentioned, Andrew Prendeville, uh, he started 24th in that car. Andrew out of uh, Chatham, New Jersey in that TMR Extreme Coil Drilling Team More Racing Machine. And Andrew Prendeville, a Firestone Indy Light Series veteran right now driving that way. He is the biggest mover up 10 spots from his starting spot on the grid. Right, another mover that we have other than him is also Pablo Donoso has moved up. Uh, he's in 12th and started 21st. So both these guys have really good races. This is a close tight battle here. Looks like Prendeville does have the speed, but it's really tough to pass, and he's showing the nose and basically putting as much pressure as he can on Jay Howard, hoping Jay Howard makes a mistake. Rookie Sebastian Saavedra also having a pretty good day as he is up six positions from 17th on the grid. He's got a good he run here. Runs 11th. He's got a really good run Down here. Down that back it. straightaway between eight and nine, Ari, this is one of the good passing zones here. He's going to get him. Yep, he's going to make a move. Let's see if Jay Howard gets enough room. Oh, yeah. Great move. Great. And it looks like Jay's going to give up another spot right here. Jesse Mason putting on the pressure, trying to make it outside. On he the outside him. of 10. Great pass. pass. Great pass. So Jesse Mason will pick up the position as well as suddenly Jay Howard gives up not one but two spots on the track. But you've got to think that it was Prendeville's move that set up the Jesse Mason move. Exactly. Well. It, it slowed down the momentum going into 9 and 10 going around the outside. That's a great move there. So good action all around the track. Uh, but. As we watch Prendeville head into turn number one, Jesse Mason behind him, the guy up front who is having himself a great day here on the streets of Long Beach, California's own J.R. Hildebrand, Ari Leyendijk Jr. This guy, he edged out in Kansas last year. He's a good yeah. race car driver, but a lot is expected of J.R. Hildebrand. He, he, he has very high expectations for himself and the racing world has expected this guy to kind of break out of the shell and, and be a big winner in this series. Right, JR and I obviously raced together last year. We had a really good battle in Kansas where uh, he won the race and I ended up finish, finishing third. And you know, he has one win under his belt and uh, a lot of experience of, of being in the series last year as a rookie. And we're seeing him today just put on a really good show. He's had the speed all weekend. You know, he's moved into to this team, AFS and Dreddy Green, and Dreddy Green Racing, the number 26 car, which I actually drove last year. And now we're get a look at Hinchcliffe here. Hinchcliffe is third. He's at a real solid weekend in St. Pete, looking to also uh, walk away with another podium finish, so he's having a good weekend. So you've got uh, Hinchcliffe, who currently runs third, but he has actually backed up a spot from where he started uh, on the grid because he was on the outside of the front row, gave up that spot to Richard Philippe, and he currently runs third. So with uh, 34 laps being worked right now, the 45 will run. We take a look at Stefan Wilson. This His brother, Justin Wilson, runs obviously in the IndyCar series, a winner in that series as well. This kid, the biggest driver in Firestone Indy Lights, literally. Exactly. You, you think he comes in at about 6'5". He, he is a, a lot taller than I am, and I, I had knee surgery on my knee last year because of the continual bruising I faced inside the race car. These cars are not built for guys over 6 feet tall, and this guy is probably at least 6'3", so he's making it happen here. He's, he's had a really solid weekend. Uh, that team, Walker Racing, prepares a really good car. And he's been, uh, you know, impressing. And the, this is Summerton right here. Let's talk about him because he has probably been the most solid driver through St. Pete and this uh, weekend as well. 
and right now he's having a good race. He's and you know, at St. Pete, Jonathan went from sixth to second in race number one, then in race number two from 16th to fourth. He right. comes in second in championship points here this afternoon. Exactly. He's uh, with Anderson Racing, which feels a great car, which is actually the car that JR drove last year, so that's interesting. Ana Beatrice currently running sixth. She was engaged in a, a, a real good battle early on here, Ari, and then that battle broke off because of a problem with Jonathan Bomarito, but she and Bomarito, they were going at it hot and heavy there for a few laps. Bomarito is definitely putting on the pressure, and Anna didn't make any mistakes. You know, she's got the experience, had a little bit of a mistake last week in St. Pete, you know, when her and JR got into each other, but here she's uh, you know, putting together a good race. She has solid, consistent times. Um, she has been up there in the top three, but she's putting together a, a good enough result to, to leave here with uh, more points, and obviously it's a long year, so you have to take what you can get. 24 years old, uh, Ana Beatrice from Sao Paulo, Brazil, and that healthy choice, Sam Schmidt, Motorsports Machine. Ali Jackson, the young man from Belfast, Northern Ireland. Uh, he's just making his third start in the series. He as well. There, there are high expectations for this young man as Ali Jackson comes into the series. He is currently running seventh, and uh, it's our first opportunity to really get a good look at, at, at uh, Ali Jackson uh, here today at St. Pete. So, once again, through that hairpin, but the driver's really having to work hard through that 9, 10, 11 segment of this racetrack. And you just heard Savager hit the, uh, the rev limiter, which is definitely going to hurt him on this straightaway here. Um, you know, currently 11th, so he has made up a lot of spots during this race. Uh, right now, he's putting the pressure on Daniel Harrington into one third gear corner very quick. Now we go to the, towards the fountain, which the drivers never notice because they're obviously concentrating on the track. Uh, very difficult corner there, second gear corner. Here's a third gear corner. It's pretty quick, goes up a little hill here. Here's where we have that crown of the road, right here. Can't really tell on, on camera, but, there, but it's very difficult to, uh, to negotiate the straightaway and, and get the car straightened out. Well, you see Daniel Harrington there in the number 28 car. That car is owned by a former great in the light series. We're talking about Brian Herta. He is with Kevin Lee the 93 Indy Lights champ and a winner in IndyCar racing. So what's the transition been like for you now, moving on to this side of pit lane? Yeah, it's, it's a different feeling for sure, but um, I'm really enjoying it. We've got a great group of guys here, partner Steve Newey, and it's our second weekend together, and you know, feel like we're really growing as a team. I'm looking forward to the challenge ahead for the rest of the season. And his driver is uh, pretty good. Daniel Harrington, fifth and seventh last weekend. He's moved from 13th to 10th today. That's Brian Herta. Well, this weekend on Versus, qualifying for the Kansas Indy 300. That comes your way Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. The Kansas Indy 300 live on Versus this Sunday afternoon, 4 o'clock Eastern. And Firestone Indy Lights action, the Kansas 100. That comes your way next Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. J.R. Hildebrand with the laps now beginning to wind down here on the streets of Long Beach. Out in front of Richard Philippe, James Hinchcliffe, Stephen Wilson, Jonathan Summerton round out your top five on a beautiful day on the West Coast. Welcome back to the Firestone Indy Lights Long Beach 100 on versus a picture perfect day weather wise. And for this guy, Ari Lyon Dyke Jr., I'm not so sure that things could have gone any better. Of course, he's still got about four and a half laps remaining, but we're talking about the driver from Sausalito, California, J.R. Hildebrand, who right now is working on a four and a half second lead on second place, Richard Philippe. Right, four and a half seconds is a quite a bit of distance and he's done really well on the restarts and that's been the key uh, to this race because he, he's had the speed he had the speed in, in St. Pete as well but he had a bad restart and, uh, and that led to him getting passed there and here we see him he's, he's done great on the restarts he's building a rhythm right now He's right, really in the zone, and uh, I think that if nothing goes wrong, you know, if we don't see any more yellows, he'll walk away with it. He's got nobody in his mirrors. He's out there right now all by himself as far as he's concerned, just on a Sunday afternoon drive. Hey, the Stanley Cup playoffs on versus every second counts tonight. Back-to-back -back game threes, first at seven. The Rangers rock the garden as their series against the Caps shifts to New York. Then at 9.30, we skate to the Calgary Saddle Dome where the Flames hit the home ice against the Blackhawks. Tonight, it's the NHL right here on Versus. J.R. Hildebrand, he's cool as eyes right now, isn't he? He's doing great. Yeah. You know, when you're in the car, Ari, and it's going this well, do, do you allow yourself to think, man, this has been easy? 
or, or are you so aware of the fact that something could break in the next 100 feet that you never allow yourself to relax until you roll underneath the checkers? You really don't think about a mechanical issue, but you do start you know, relaxing a little bit, which is exactly what you don't want to do. You really want to stay focused. You want to concentrate on every corner. Because as soon as you start thinking you got this thing in the bag, you can make a mistake. As soon as you relax, you can make a mistake. And it's really about getting into rhythm. And when you're in a, into a rhythm, everything's automatic. It's like going into automatic pilot mode. You know, you break the same point, you turn at the same point, on the throttle at the same point. And if you do that, you know, it'll be smooth sailing. J.R. Hildebrand closing in on his second win. There he is, Gary Peterson. He looks nervous. He, he does look a little nervous. <laughs> Gary, of course, is the man that owns this team, AFS, partnered with Andretti Green Racing. This is the team that you drove for. No one prouder to win a yeah. championship in Firestone Indy Lights than Gary Peterson was in 2008. Gary, Gary's a great guy, and this is his first uh, venture into IndyCar racing for as a sponsor because he's sponsoring Marco's car this weekend. Uh, this obviously being his home race, so seeing uh, J.R. win would be great for him. He he just lives down the street in Huntington, so that would be great. The 26R Pro Machine of J.R. Hildebrand cruising here on the streets of Long Beach. Oh, and we got Andrew Prendeville has had himself a good day. But, Ari, we were just talking about the fact that it's not over until right. you see the checkers. And it looks like Andrew Prendeville's day is going to end early. And that's a shame. And the damage you see right here was from a prior incident. So I don't think that's the issue. I don't know what it is. But, oh, man, to see him climb 11 spots. That's a shame. That is a shame. Started 24th, has, has worked his, had worked his way uh, to, to 13th, had done some good racing today. So the driver from New Jersey, Andrew Prendeville, and that TMR extreme coil drilling car will unhook. That's a shame. Richard Philippe, who we've talked about, he's got to run his own race as well, Ari, because there's a couple of seconds separating him from third place, James Hinchcliffe. So he's been in kind of the same seat as Hildebrand. Exactly. There's a little bit of a gap there. I did see uh, JR see uh, some traffic, so maybe Richard can, can capitalize on that. He's still is four and a half seconds behind and there's only two laps to go so he's got to count on a mistake happening he's just wishing that you know jr makes a mistake or you know uh you know has a, a fade of some sort but right now uh he's putting in a good race a podium finish would be great for him white flag is out final lap of the long beach 100 jr hildebrand is going to pull up on the rear wing of some lap traffic here he's going to really have to tiptoe his way through as uh, he draws a uh, very close to Pippa Man. He's very lucky that he has a gap here for uh, f about four seconds last time by, so 4.8 seconds actually. So he can take his time getting around these people. Uh, here we got a good passing opportunity, and even if he would just drive behind Pippa Man to the finish, I think it would be enough time and distance to where he'd be okay for the victory. This is the first time that J.R. Hildebrand has really had to worry yeah, with exactly. another car today. As it, I'm not so sure at this point that he's even going to try to make the pass. I think he has enough of a cushion, unless he can get a clean run here between eight and nine on the long straightaway. I guess he's probably going to be content. What do you think? He's got to be really careful about this because he's got to, you know, right now the team is telling him, you got no worries. Car, second place is far back. Just, just stay behind Pippa. And that's exactly what he's doing. He's not putting on the pressure right here going through 10. J.R. Hildebrand for the final time will set up for the hairpin off of turn number 11. And now he's got the flag stand inside. It has been a perfect day for the driver from Sausalito, California. J.R. Hildebrand starts on pole and he wins it all here at Long Beach as he takes the Long Beach 100. Richard Philippe will wind up second. James Hinchcliffe is third. Jonathan Summerton is fourth. Anna Beatrice will come across the line in fifth place. So there you three are unofficial results, the top three. Rest of the top ten, Ali Jackson, James Davison, Sebastian Saavedra, Gustavo Yakaman, and Daniel Harrington. It's all Hildebrand here at Long Beach. The Firestone Indy Lights Long Beach 100 on Versus is presented by Firestone. With a tradition of innovation that spans over 100 years, Firestone is the first name in Indy racing. J.R. Hildebrand, you couldn't ask for better. That's all there is to it. That AFS Andretti green car led every lap. Richard Philippe winds up second. James Hinchcliffe was third. Jonathan Summerton fourth. Then Ana Beatriz, Ali Jackson, James Davison, Sebastian Saavedra, and the rest of the top ten. Pablo Donoso, Donoso, the biggest mover on the day, as he starts 21st, winds up 11th. There you see the rest of the field. Rodrigo Barbosa, unfortunate for him as he had a problem. But let's hear from the guy that stole the show here, J.R. Hildebrand, the winner here of the Long Beach 100. Kevin Lee? 
J.R. Hildebrand climbing from his car, just received congratulations from Michael Andretti, other members of the crew. He's a native Californian, and he wins here on one of the most historic tracks in open wheel racing. Tell me about your day today. Nobody came very close. Oh, man, we had a great run. Uh, you know, the boys did a great job putting the car together. Uh, we were quick in qualifying, had a little bit extra in the tank, I think, and uh, you know, I think we showed that out there. We had great long run pace. Firestone Firehawks held up. I was running the same lap times at the end that I was running at the beginning, so and I can't thank the guys enough. Our pro, Doug Mockett, uh, Racemaker Press, everybody's just been doing a great job, so hopefully we can keep it going from here. Congratulations on a great day. Thanks, man. That's J.R. Hildebrand, the winner here at Long Beach. J.R. Hildebrand now third in points, but Junior Strauss keeps the lead. Coming up next, it's the Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach. Join us next week right here on Versus for the Indy Lights Kansas 100, Monday, April the 27th at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Hey, remember, for more information on IndyCar, log on to Versus.com. What a day for AFS and Andretti Green. That R Pro car leads all 45 laps, and J.R. Hildebrand moves up from seventh to third in the Firestone Indy Lights Championship standings. But Junior Strauss will go to race number four, retaining the championship lead despite the fire here today at Long Beach. So in the championship, it's Strauss, Summerton, and Hildebrand. So long from Long Beach, and congratulations to Gary Peterson,